So the algae that I got was Burkhorococcus, and it's actually, I'm trying. So some background information about like the taxonomy of it is it's from Burkhorococcus. Excuse my, I don't pronounce it very well, but um, new bacteria, cyanobacteria, cyanophysia, cyanocorollaries, porchlora species, and then the genus, which is porchlorococcus, and there's actually only one species, but it's divided into like six different clades based on like heat, their temperature optimum. So the species is Porcorococcus marinus. So it has, um, it can sustain like high concentrations in the euphoric zone of the open ocean. It's in temperate areas, so tropical, tropical. <coughs> and sometimes the distribution of it is through seasonal patterns. And then according to one of the studies um, that I read about, it can grow at 25 degrees Celsius, but can't grow to 20, at 29 degrees Celsius. And the way that it reproduces is through binary vision, vision. And they have like cylindrical bodies, their gram negative cell walls, as well as they have um, <coughs> chlor chlorophyll A and B. So important features, they have elongated cells, so this is the elongated work, um, picture of the cell, and then there's the, the cross-section. Um, they have low phosphorus requirements. Um, they have small genomes, as well as they substitute phospholipids for um, sulfolipids because of their low requirement for um, phosphorus. They live and they have high surface high surface to volume ratios and can survive in a lot of different realms of light, so from lower light intensities to higher light intensities. Um, they define the lower boundaries of the uh, photosynthetic life, as well as, as I said before, the um, chlorophyll A and B and uh, thiocoids, which is in the membrane here. <coughs> so this is a comparison between the, the light thing. so if you look here, here's the one of the defining characteristics, which is the chlorophyll A and B, and if you look at Xenococcus, there have the phycobilums. So that's one of the very big key characteristic differences between them. So significance, it's one of the, it's the most abundant organism on Earth. It actually produces about 50% of chloroplasts in the vast surface of the ocean. It's a global primary producer and contributes to about 40% of the bacterial of bacterial production that of bacteria that produces carbon. And it releases organic molecules into the seawater through secretion and the lysine of cell of their cells. Um, and then they also are preyed upon by tunicates ciliates and flagellates, as well as some other types of species. So they actually practice mixotrophia, so which is a combination of autotrophia and heterotrophia. So they use heterotrophia as is consuming things and consuming um, other organisms as well as photosynthesis. So one of the significances about this species is, like I said, it's very abundant and widespread, as well as it has, it can be affected by climate change, so as the water warms, the bacterial distribution of it will shift based on the high intensity and low intensity adapted cells that they have, and so it can, if the warming of the water increases, the increased abundance of chlorocarbonates will occur and it'll move out to, pole, to poles, and then the lower intensity um, cells will move away from the equator. 